families, and welcome to the annual Black History Month Unit Showcase. February is a month to recognize the contributions of African Americans throughout American history and in today's world. As graciously stated by Dr. Martin Luther King, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. At Universal Learning Academy, our mission is centered on embracing one another and working toward a shared vision in the best interest of all, just as the leaders that you'll hear from today did with grit and determination. Today, staff and students across all grade levels will showcase some of the contributions of several Black Americans and their role in paving the way for a better life for all. We hope you enjoy this creative collection of talents by our very own Blue Jays. I'd like to call on our principal, Mrs. Leal Busi, to share a few welcoming remarks before turning Mike, the mic over to our host for today, Mrs. Kayla Coldren. Welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Hojej. Um, good afternoon, Blue Jay family. Good afternoon, families, um, parents, staff, students, and everyone that has had the chance to tune in um, with us this afternoon and to really join in on this wonderful celebration and join in with our annual Black History Month um, unit showcase and celebration. Um, I would like to take a few minutes um, to recognize the effort um, that our educators are putting in day in and day out. Um, I recognize the teachers, uh, you know, efforts to integrate African American History Month studies into the curriculum, into the assessments. Today, we will have an opportunity to really observe and, and join in the celebration with seeing what the students have put together and what the teachers have put together this past month. Really, as educators at Universal Learning Academy, we take this celebration as an opportunity for all stakeholders to build knowledge, to instill enthusiasm, and give inspiration to our students. As we learn and celebrate the history of the wonderful and the wonderful contributions and achievements across many disciplines and across many fields, our students can have a better chance of understanding African-American struggles. And by that, they'll have a better chance to fight their own, to fight their own challenges despite the odds that we be day in and day out. As a diverse community within our school, we take pride, yes, we take pride in highlighting the civil rights struggles that we all share and we all often reflect on the deep connections we have with the accomplished leaders who really were the reason and who fought for our society to become more open, more mindful, and more tolerant. We, tr we truly hope that after this month, our students walked away learning to appreciate a little more about the people who helped us all gain, gain the rights we live today and exercise each day. Let us all unite, reflect, celebrate, and observe African-American culture with its past, present, and future. I would like to thank Ms. Coldren again for her leadership um, in taking over this event and collaborating with our teachers, with our students, and the families as well, for supporting our students to put together a wonderful student-led um, unit showcase today. And at this time, let us all welcome Mrs. Nawal Hamadi with her welcoming remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Boosty. Um, I want to thank you and I want to thank all the staff for uh, celebrating this event and uh, for also coordinating and making sure that our students are gaining uh, a lot of knowledge and um, benefit out of this uh, celebration and that you're making it meaningful to them. Uh, I really appreciate the hard work. I want to thank the viewers and the students and the families also for joining us. Um, and I want to say congratulations on having uh, another year to celebrate the Black History Month. Uh, often we're, be, we're being asked, so why and what's important about it? As you all know, Black History Month is a month to celebrate the growth and accomplishments of the Blacks in the U.S., Canada, and even around the globe. 
for the longest times, Blacks have endured physical, mental, emotional, psychological abuse, social injustice, and so um, simply because of their color. Though they have gone through so much over time with a lot of hard work, dedication, faith, unity, and the wisdom of the leaders, they set their goals to be freed and to have equal rights like their fellow whites. With much hard work and wisdom, they were able to overcome many of the difficulties, challenges, and injustices. They, even though they have not accomplished 100% of their goals yet, more work to be achieved and they have not given up and the mission continues on. Luckily, the Blacks are in a much better position today as the laws provide for equity, social justice, and equality for all. Um, we learned so many lessons from such history and the people of Black color. And so it is so important to remember to be fair, to treat others the way we want to be treated and to not tolerate harassment, bullying, and discrimination of any type. Let's remember that the Blacks are people like each one of us and that they have the same rights like everyone else. All people should be treated equally, regardless of their religious beliefs, colors, nationalities, genders, and so on. As mentioned earlier, today we celebrate those who made a huge contribution in the various fields such as law, politics, science, sports, music, the media, and the list goes on. Some of those um, most remarkable is to remember is the Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a scholar and a civil rights activist who played a key role in peacefully ending the segregation law and created the Civil Rights Act for which we are enjoying, all of us. It banned discrimination in employment um, uh, against the Blacks or anybody else. So, and then also he was a, a, able to accomplish um, uh, to get the Voting Rights Act in place in 1965, which passed and signed, uh, was passed and signed by President Johnson. And it removed the barriers which prevented the Blacks from voting in the past. There's so many accomplished Blacks to name, such as uh, Rosa Parks, Muhammad Ali, Jackie Robinson, and the list goes on and continues to go on. How is this related to all of us? And what do we learn from this unique event and celebration? We take lessons from the past in dealing with differences, racism, and discrimination. We are all brothers and sisters who come in multitude of colors shapes, sizes, ages, and so on. We all have and should have equal rights and should be able to defend our rights when they're unjustly taken away from us. Hope we all use these lessons to peacefully build better futures for us, for our children, the generations to come, and for all humanity, and to continue to stand against injustice, discrimination, and violence. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the event, and please stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Damari, and at this time, we welcome Ms. Cauldron. Thank you, Ms. Hamadi. Hello, and welcome to our Black History Month program. We are so excited to have you join us. Um, so what is Black History Month and why do we celebrate it? Our first video, um, the ULA staff shares the history of Black History Month with you. Black History Month is an annual observance originating in the United States dedicated to promoting the achievements of Black Americans and other people of African descent. It has even received official recognition from other world governments, such as Canada, Ireland, the Netherlands, and even the United Kingdom. The origins of Black History Month date back to 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the United States. That year, Carter G. Woodson and Jesse E. Moreland founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. This organization was dedicated to promoting achievements by Black Americans and other people of African descent. In 1926, the ASALH 
decided to sponsor Negro History Week during the second week in February. This week was chosen because it coincided with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass, an abolitionist, and former U.S. President Abraham Lincoln, who had signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which led to the end of slavery. This event inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize local celebrations, establish history clubs, and host performances and lectures. By 1929, Negro History Week was met with enthusiastic response. Black history clubs were created and the event gained an interest of teachers and progressive white Americans. In the decades that followed, mayors of cities across the country began issuing yearly proclamations recognizing Negro History Week. By the late 1960s, thanks in part to the civil rights movement and growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week had evolved into Black History Month on many college campuses. In 1976, President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month. Ford called upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Since then, every American president has designated February as Black History Month and endorsed a specific theme. Today, Black History Month continues the discussion and celebration of Black people and people of African descent and their contribution to history and culture. Universal Learning Academy proudly uses this month to educate, celebrate, and reflect. It is an opportunity to recognize and acknowledge the many ways in which Black people have contributed to the building of our great nation. Together, we can continue building a stronger community, a community that is welcoming, a community that is diverse, inclusive, and equitable. Mothers, you rocked me to sleep and wiped my tears. You loved me sweetly throughout the years. You listened to my stories and shared your own. You made me laugh and helped me grow. <laughs> Your love means more. <laughs> Your love means more <laughs> than you will ever know. I love you. Lift Every Voice and Sing, a poem written by James Weldon Johnson, performed for the first time by 500 students to the music of his brother, Roseman Johnson, to celebrate President ACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, in hopes of bringing light to African Americans and hope for change. It is known today as the Black National Anthem. Lift every voice and sing.
Thank you, Zainab and Miss Ashley, for sharing those wonderful performances with us. Our next videos celebrate the lives and accomplishments of many influential African Americans through art, music, and more. Please enjoy these videos. giving up her seat for a white man. I like Michael Jackson because his music makes me dance. My famous person is Ruby Bridge, the first African-American child to attend in all white elementary schools in the South. Hi, hi, my name is Esther in the South. Hi, hi, my name is Esther Dickner from 2A. Today I'm doing for Black History Month, Rosa Parks. R Rosa Parks. Rosa was a civil rights activist famous for not giving up her seat on the bus. and I drew these for Black History Month. So this one is Martin Luther King Jr. I decided to draw him because I thought that he was one of the people who changed the most from back then because they used to treat uh, blacks as slaves and the white people used to treat them like that. Then I drew Rosa Parks because I think that she also did blacks in the front of the bus, but she changed that. Hello, my name is Ava, and I joined the Black History Month program, and I'm, and I'm going to talk about Harriet Tubman. She was born 1820, Dorchester County, Maryland. She died on March 10, 1913, Auburn, New York. Her birth name was Arminta Ross. She married a free black man named John Tubman, which is when she took her mother's name Harriet and, become, and became Harriet Tubman. She was a runaway slave who became known as the Moses of her people. She led hundreds of slaves to, to freedom along the Underground Railroad for 10 years. She later became a leader in the abol abolitionist movement movement and during the Civil War she was a spy for the Federal Forces in South Carolina as well as a nurse. That's it. Bye. Audrey Lorday was born in 1934 in Harlem, New York. During her college years, she started dedicating herself to writing poetry. The poem she wrote consisted of strong words that had the power to change societal issues. Because she helped many people through major societal issues. As a black female activist towards POC individuals, her voice was very impactful and motivating to those who faced oppression in the world. She was highly respected in all types of communities, leading to her mention on Google Doodles earlier this month on her 87th Birthday. Today I'll be telling Rosa Parks' story. Rosa Parks was a female activist in the 50s. Story the bus. In the 50s, African American people had to sit on the back seats of the bus. Once she was sitting on the front seat when the bus driver asked her to get up and go sit in the back. She refused to. She was one of the first people to refuse getting up. I will always remember her words when she said, you must never be fearful about what you are doing when it is right. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. I have a dream 
that when in this nation will rise but let out a true meaning of this is Greek. We hold these to be self evident that all men created equal. Equal liberty for you and me. We shall overcome it is what he sings. You just that his name is Dr. King. Nonviolence is what Martin stands for stands for it doesn't matter if you white or you hardcore we here for peace not the start of revolution he had a dream for the whole entire nation a civil rights activist is is Maka X. It doesn't matter if you white or black. If you dish out a lick, you have to work back him back. In 65, they burn his house down. You better run, cause he's coming to the town. Not pulling any violence to the neighborhood. Malcolm X died for cause where he stood. The Underground Railroad, she left people in a daze. They tried to figure out how she was able to free 300 slaves. She went to the woods, through the woods. You know she is good, she even went through my neighborhood. She is the greatest, her soul lies in me. Thank the Lord for black history. There's a bus in it from the start. This is a wet moving rose at wet moving rose at parks. She didn't want to give up a seat, sit up on her and jail to her. Stuck a nerve to start the bomb boy car. She was the mother of moving and sweet. So why you want this pretty girl to give up her bus seat? She was mad in a different cell city. That's the way she made place back history. Nick and my Alice block of the hutches. They are writers they know for all the schools. The moral of the story. It's simple and clear, teaching black is supposed to be all year Without the history, we blind in the facts What a wonderful song celebrating all of those people in black history Our next act celebrates a wonderful family history of two of our very own Blue Jays Miss Stewart and um, her daughter Aya Enjoy this excerpt from the old settlers. Black history is American history. My ancestors settled in the central part of Michigan in the 1860s. They settled in the counties of Isabella, Macasta, and Montcalm. The black settlement is known as the old settlers. In the short video, my mother and I assume's grandmother, who is the president of OSRW, presents a video of our family's history. This video venerates the old settlers who migrated to Macasta, Isabella, and Mount Calm counties starting in the 1860s before the Civil War ended. First, the video shows the old settlers who came to Michigan starting in 1860. Next are the one-room schoolhouses, then the Morgan West Wheatland Cemetery, the Wheatland Church, logging camps, and last, the leisure time activities. Some old settlers came from Canada through the Underground Railroad. A large number ended up in Payne's Crossing, which was predominantly an African-American community on the border of Perry and Hocking counties in Ohio. Payne Cro Payne's Crossing was founded in the 1830s. Most early residents were freed or runaway slaves from the South, especially from Virginia. Today, the community no longer exists. The only thing left in Payne's Crossing is a cemetery where many Civil War colored troops are buried. The cemetery is currently preserved and viewable in the Wayne National Forest. Old settler names started showing up in the 1830s. Others came from Muskegon County, Ohio, known as the Let Settlement, 
which was an early link on Ohio's Underground Railroad. The Harpers, Letts, Normans, and Stevens were free people of color who were the first to settle in the area in the 1830s. The Homestead Act of 1862 allowed each settler 160 acres of land, which was a draw of migration to Michigan. The first African-American settler in Isabella County was Doraville Whitney, who arrived in 1860. Lloyd and Margaret Guy settled in Mount Calm County in 1861. James Guy settled in Macasta County in 1860. The old settler communities attended the first integrated schools in the state of Michigan. The one-room schoolhouses that were part of the old settler, le old settler legacy were the Oberlin School, built in 1870, the McCabe School, 1884, the Little River School opened in 1880, the Cross School opened in 1877, the Jolette School was on Norman property and built in 1893. To learn more about this wonderful history, you can watch the entire video at youtube.com. Search The Old Settlers 1860-2020. What a wonderful family history. Um, you can watch the entire video on YouTube by searching The Old Settlers. So before we watch our final act, I would like to thank the following people. Ms. Hamadi, our superintendent, Mr. Shepherdine, who is behind the computer helping to organize the event, Ms. Busi, our principal, Ms. Hojesh, our assistant principal, Ms. Musilani, who helped with decorations, um, the staff of ULA, the, and the students and parents who helped make this entire performance possible. Our final performance is an excerpt from a speech that Michelle Obama gave as her final speech as First Lady. Please enjoy. I would like to share some words from the final speech of former First Lady Michelle Obama. I want our young people to know that they matter, that they belong. Don't be afraid. Be focused. Be determined. Be hopeful. Be empowered. Empower yourself with good education. Then get out there and use that education to build a country worthy of your boundless promise. Lead by example with hope. Never fear. I am so grateful to all educators for your passion and your dedication and all the hard work on behalf of the next generation. Thank you for everything you do for our kids and our country. And thank you, Fatima, for such a wonderful conclusion to our event and celebration today. What a way, wonderful way to end the event. Thanking and acknowledging the hard work of our educators. Thank you, families. Thank you, Ms. Aldrin, for your leadership. And um, many thanks to everyone that contributed to supporting our students and celebrating Black History Month. As we mentioned previously, let's continue to be united, let's continue to reflect, and let's continue to make better choices to make our world and society a better place to live. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and let's have a wonderful end of the week.